Hello. Nice to see you again. Well, the next time we come together, we're going to focus on class 2 orthodontic and dental facial orthopedic treatment. Let's take a look at some of the results that I'll be showing. During the meeting, these cases will be shown in tremendous detail, including all of the mechanics that you'll need to know. For our meeting, May 25 and May 26, as mentioned, we'll be concentrating on class 2 as well as missing teeth. Examples such as this patient. This uh, girl is about 8 years of age. When she postures her lower jaw forward, this is what she looks like. And if you look at the upper right hand side of the screen, you can see how she looks after approximately one year of treatment. It certainly looks as though I've made her lower jaw grow. On the center screen, you see the finished case and five years post-retention. We'll be looking at all of the interesting details as well as mechanics that involve this type of treatment. Most critically, we'll be looking at various treatment options. How do you think this example was achieved? Do you think this was done by holding the lower jaw forward? Do you think it was done by moving the upper molars backward? Something like a headgear, for example. Do you think it was treated with a removable device? Or do you think it makes no difference? There are some rather interesting facts that we'll take a look at in class two treatment. Certainly, we'll look at the controversy of treatment timing. What's the best time to treat a class two case? And as we will find out from rather excellent research from Bashara, that there is little or no chance that class twos will in fact self-correct. They need to be treated. Let's take a look at this young patient as well. He's seven and a half. He has a pleasant looking profile. But actually, this is what he looks like. What I've done between the left and right sides is just ask him to hold his lower jaw forward. So obviously on the right side, this is what we would call a visual treatment objective. If you take just a fast look at this panoramic film, you can see that he's short of space for a few teeth. Here you can see an interesting lower arch asymmetry that there is an inadequate space available for his lower right canine as well there's a midline shift. We'll look at the details of cephalometric analysis and facial type and we'll look at a rather interesting and exceptionally simple way of correcting this type of asymmetry in the mixed dentition with absolutely no extractions. A very simple straightforward method of correcting class 2. What you're looking at here is a mixed dentition phase of treatment only. This was done with limited fixed appliances and an interesting and simple class two treatment method. Actually, he was treated the exact same way that the girl was treated, except this boy had crowding. Take a look at the occlusal view and ask yourself, how was the arch shape change achieved. This was again done with a very, very simple appliance, which is essentially indestructible and worn part-time. Do you think that his facial form change, upper left, normal position, next picture, lower jaw forward, then in 2007, do you think I actually made his lower jaw grow forward? If so, how did I do that? And then a picture in 2010 on the lower right side. How do you think these results were achieved? Do you think it was done by holding the lower jaw forward? Do you think it was achieved by distalizing the molars? Do you think it was achieved by maxillary control? Or do you think it makes no difference? Here is the same patient treated only in the mixed dentition he had no full permanent dentition treatment at all at this point. What do you think that these two patients have in common? Because in fact, they were treated in a very similar way. Take a look at this 10 year, three month old female. She has reasonably nice facial balance. 
a bit of a class two profile with a strong chin, but upper arch crowding. Do you think that she is a candidate for removal of upper bicuspids only and finishing the molars class two? How do you think this result was achieved? Notice the very strong class one molars treated only in the mixed dentition with limited treatment appliances. Note the seating at the white arrow of the first molar seated as in Andrews keys to occlusion with the distal marginal ridge seated down. Note here the blocked upper left canine. Perhaps she is a candidate for a removal of upper first bicuspids only or perhaps not. Again note the seating of the upper left first molar in the embrasure. Let's take a look at this from a frontal view and how do you think this result was achieved? Do you think that she had medial lateral expansion? Do you think that she was treated with fixed and removable devices? How would you achieve this type of facial result? And again, take a look at the lower right side, six years post treatment wearing retainers very, very rarely? Or do you think it makes no difference in how these patients are treated? Frontal view. How would you treat a case to get this type of result? These are the types of things we'll talk about in detail. Not just those, but we'll look at what all of these patients have in common the very challenging class to open bite. Here's a challenging case of an eight year, four month male. Terrible lip posture, obviously not helping his situation. And a class to substantial open bite. You'll note the severe bilateral class two how do you think that this arch shape change was achieved? Note the spacing on the upper arch. Do you think it was achieved with fixed appliances, fixed and removable appliances? Note the dramatic open bite closure and stability eight years later. Again, this boy was treated with very limited orthodontic techniques. Actually, the class two treatment method that he used was part-time only. Take a look at the strong molar relationship. Actually, his molars are class three at this point, and here he is with no further treatment eight years later and no retainers. Here's a composite of his facial change. And eight years later, treated with very limited orthodontic appliances. We'll talk about various treatment options, which as you know, I think are very important. Knowing which patients to treat, which patients you could wait, which patients should be considered for extraction of upper buys only, and which patients it would be best to not consider treatment of upper bicuspid extraction only. What do you think that these patients all have in common? Because essentially they were wearing a device which is indestructible. The patient cannot break this device. It's very simple to use. It's also very inexpensive. An interesting pattern. We'll concentrate even more on clinical information when we take a look at further treatment of class twos using the interesting additive and subtractive forces which were discussed in the lecture that I offered in 2011. You'll recall that this is an additive pattern of mechanics and we'll look at exactly how this is used for a class two open bite where additive force systems were used, intraoral adjustments only, 
very easy to do, very straightforward, using wires and pliers that you likely already have in your clinic. Notice at the upper left corner there is some asymmetric movement in the anterior region. What was responsible for the asymmetric movement and how did I correct that in the lower right picture in one month with an intraoral adjustment, which was very simple to do. If we take a look at the composite view of this patient, you can see that the open bite was closed in the mixed dentition. This is the pliers that I used for, for the intraoral adjustments. Essentially, all of the intraoral adjustments, adjustments are made um, with a very, very simple technique. It'll be important to study what the exact mechanism of change is. So we'll take a look at that in some detail. Here is this patient's facial change between time one, time two, and then post-retention at time three. Profile change. You can make your own decision about how much profile change you think there has been. And here is the same patient 11 months post-treatment. He was treated in the mixed dentition with the exact same treatment method the other patients were treated with and then had a very, very short phase of permanent dentition fixed appliances for detailing and finishing. Mixed dentition treatment. Now we'll also concentrate on some permanent dentition treatment using interesting fixed appliances. Here's a troubleshooting technique. This patient did not cooperate in the first phase of treatment and therefore there was some interesting options used during the second phase, permanent dentition phase of treatment. This was a case transferred to me because the previous orthodontist was looking at taking out upper bicuspids only. You'll notice on your upper left screen a full dentition class 2. Lower right is end on towards class 2. The canines are somewhat blocked. The lower arch is non-extraction. The cephalometric patterns that we'll look at are always important. How would you treat this particular patient? What would be the mechanical sequence? Certainly it appears as though taking out upper bicuspids only is a good option, but that's not what was done. You'll note here that there is some asymmetry in the finish. We'll discuss what's behind that in our discussion of asymmetric mechanics. The left side is strong class one, the right side not as strong class one. There were limitations in the case and we will discuss not only the mechanics but the limitations of midline correction. You can make your own decisions for the facial balance. You can make your own decisions about how the facial profile was changed. Cephalometrically we'll actually take a look at this patient and others for dental facial balance. We'll look at this in some important detail so that we can understand how to troubleshoot this type of patient. We'll note some interesting maxillary change. If you look from black to red rather quickly, the red is the finished position and you'll note very interesting posterior distalization in order to fit in the canines. We'll take a look at risks of root resorption during treatment, and we'll want to be certain of reasonable stability. Here is this particular individual two years post-treatment when she's 16, showing very nice facial balance and a nice dental facial balance in profile. She's wearing removable appliances for retention. Her retainers are removable. They're only worn very few nights a week. 
One of the other topics that I'll cover in some detail are missing permanent teeth. If you take a quick look at this panoramic film, you'll note that this patient is not missing one, but is missing two lower incisors. This is a congenitally missing tooth case. What do you think your treatment options are for this type of patient? What do you think, how do you think he would be treated most appropriately for the best end result? Given the upper arch crowding, the lower missing teeth, do you think it would be a good idea to consider opening space in the lower arch? Do you think it would be a good idea to consider uh, removing upper bias and converting a nice class one to a class two? How do you think this patient was treated? Treatment time was 16 months start to finish. And as you look at the lower right hand picture, how do you think he was treated? Do you think he was treated with upper bicuspid extraction? Are you pleased with his profile change? Do you think he has a nice dental facial balance, not only from a frontal view, but from a profile smiling view? And how do you think this result was achieved in 16 months? Do you think that that's an acceptable result? We'll go over the mechanics in detail of how this patient was treated, including some rather interesting torque control for balance of the upper incisors. The clinical application and the details of the clinical application are something that all of us find very interesting. Simplified mechanics will be emphasized in our May meeting in Warsaw. We'll talk about the essential aspects of mechanics. We'll be reviewing how the use of the center of resistance versus the center of rotation is, is utilized in best detail. We'll talk about the simple as well as the complex and making this, the complex simple in the application of movement of the center of resistance. And we'll have demonstrations of applied mechanics and the line action of force and how they affect tooth movement and troubleshooting. We'll be looking at the difference between the center of resistance and the center of rotation and the best way to move those points in order to achieve our results in the shortest period of time with the best possible end result. We'll look at the concept of combi combining forces with couples and how, what the difference is between using a couple and using a pure force because as you'll recall, when a force is placed on a tooth, there are actually only four things that can occur. Only four things can occur. I'm certainly looking forward to seeing you at our May meeting for class two treatment, missing teeth, a two day meeting, May 25 and 26. We'll be looking at these and other class two cases. Again, the mechanics will be shown in tremendous detail because as you know, I would like to avoid confusing you in any way and making everything as clinically applicable as possible. Simplified mechanics, class twos, class two asymmetries, extraction versus non-extraction of upper buys, missing teeth, all of these things will be covered and I'm looking forward to seeing you again.